Hello and welcome to another fabulously fantastic edition of our Tech of the Month show. This is where we bring you some of the best, most innovative and sometimes downright weird tech that lands in the bike radar office. This time around, I've brought along the Ribble Ultra SL, which will be appearing in Bike of the Year very soon. Simon is testing that one, but I wanted to have a closer look at the tech and the aero claims before he does. Now, speaking of Simon, he appears to have been to Ibiza and brought home a pair of sunglasses. Anyway, Tom Law has a relatively affordable carbon wheel set from Hunt, and someone let Felix bring in a waffle maker. Yeah. And Will Soft is here with a Pembry stem, which is probably tiny. I'm Will from Ember UK, and this month I'm bringing you Pembry's VFS. For those of you who don't know, Pembry is an English company who make all their components in-house from locally sourced materials and are very proud of their environmental credentials. The VFS is their very first stem, get it? And features some incredible attention to detail and nerd level engineering prowess. The Zero Gap faceplate is precision machined to minute tolerances, maximizing stiffness and ensuring uniform clamping pressure on your handlebars. All the bolts are made in the UK from stainless steel and the stem is made from UK sourced aluminium that has a minimum of 75% recycled content. That makes this the most environmentally friendly stem on the market. The stem has passed international standard tests designed for downhill parts and Pembry also guarantee this stem with a five year no quibble warranty. Despite being made to survive extreme impacts, it weighs in at a scant 148 grams thanks to the high quality materials and the cutting edge machining. I visited Pembry's state-of-the-art facility in the south of England and they showed me how their stem is made. They run the whole facility on green certified ecotricity and claim that this stem is carbon neutral. It's only available in a 35 mil length, which has very quickly become the industry standard for a short stem and has a 35 mil handlebar clamp diameter. As you might expect for such a piece of bike jewelry, it doesn't come cheap at £109 or $132. But if red isn't your colour, then don't worry because this stem is also available in silver, black, blue, bronze, orange, pink, and even purple. So it's something for everyone. This is the Ribble Ultra SL, a spaceship aero race rig that makes all sorts of fancy claims about drag reduction. We've seen a slight revival of the dedicated aero race bike recently, and given a UCI rule change that seemingly favors what saving designs, we might be about to see more. Now, I'll run you through what you need to know about the Ultra SL. The integrated handlebar design has wake generating bulges on the top, which are claimed to manipulate airflow over the rider to reduce aerodynamic drag compared to a standard aero handlebar. The frame has deep truncated aerofoil tubes, a narrow head tube, and of course, dropped seat stays. The lower section of the down tube also flares out dramatically to manage the airflow around a water bottle, the assumption being that the vast majority of riders will typically carry at least one water bottle when riding. I do, and I carry probably two. Now, this reminds me a lot of the Cannondale System 6, though the Ribble is a bit more dramatic in its tube shapes. Ribble says it tested both narrow and wide fork designs, but found aligning the fork blades with the front wheel axle width was the optimum solution. So much so, in fact, that Ribble claims that the fork profile begins to create negative drag beyond five degrees of yaw. That's when it feels like the bike is being pushed forward underneath you. And if you've never felt it before, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Ribble claims that the savings from this bike are significant with a rider saving 11.6 watts at 22 miles an hour across the average of five and 10 degrees of yaw. This Ribble says makes you 75.1 seconds quicker over 40 kilometers. Now that's all very well and good, but would you want to buy a bike like that? Let me know in the comments. Now, I wonder how Simon is getting on with his rave sunglasses. Do you ever lie awake in bed worrying about how aerodynamic your sunglasses are? If so, your prayers have finally been answered as POC has released its new Propel Aero Sunglasses. That's right, POC says its Propel Sunglasses are the most aerodynamic cycling sunglasses it has ever produced. 
Now, according to the Swedish brand, the Propel sunglasses have been developed using CFD modeling, which is essentially a virtual wind tunnel. Pock says the Propels work by using a wraparound lens and so-called side fairings to divert the airflow more smoothly around the rider's ears and shoulders. In terms of gains, Pock says it's low single-figure watt savings at 40 km per hour, but that the exact gain would vary depending on the rider and their position on the bike. One key thing to note is that Pock has only compared these sunglasses to other models in its own range and not to any sunglasses from competitor brands. The Aero claims are also based solely on data collected from Pock's CFD modeling, and it hasn't been confirmed using any other form of aero testing, such as a wind tunnel or track testing. Pock says this is because glasses are too small an object to reliably test outside of CFD. However, Pock did tell us that its experience developing other aero things, such as the infamous Tempor TT helmet, shows that CFD aero gains do translate into the real world. Okay. But how much do they cost, I hear you ask? Well, with an RRP of 230 pounds, 249 euros, or 250 dollars, they certainly aren't cheap. They are, of course, available in a range of colors, and a spare clear lens is included as standard. But is 230 pounds too much money to spend on an aero upgrade which is too small to be reliably tested in a wind tunnel? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now for me, while I do think it could seem a little silly at first glance, I also think that if you're a racer and you're going to wear sunglasses, then why not have ones which are aerodynamically optimized? Every little helps, right? I love the integrated visor on my TT helmet, for example, and these function in a similar way as the frameless design gives a wide, unrestricted view of the road ahead. And hey, many weight weenies won't bat an eyelid at dropping their hard-earned cash on exotic, lightweight parts, most of which arguably make no measurable difference to performance either. So, aero sunglasses, genius idea or massive ripoff? As always, leave a comment below to let us know what you think. For my tech of the month debut, I have some lovely and relatively affordable carbon wheels from Hunt. There's a lot of tech going on with these, so I'll try not to waffle on for too long. These gorgeous carbon hoops are from Hunt's new proven range of carbon fiber mountain bike wheels. Using feedback from their team riders, Chloe Taylor, Fergus Ryan, and Isla Short, the proven range includes these hard-hitting carbon race enduro wheels and the Featherlight Carbon Race XC. The Carbon Race Enduro wheels that I have here are built to take a real pounding and come with Hunt's HCare program included in the very, very reasonable £899 price. This means free lifetime crash replacement for the first owner of these wheels if they're being used with single crown forks, which makes that price tag seem even more appealing. Of course, to back that up, they need to perform out on the trail and Hunt claim they've developed the Carbon Race Enduro to offer incredible impact resistance and outstanding trail damping properties. Hunt says the carbon layup of the front wheel has been tuned for excellent comfort and steering precision, whereas the rear places a priority on strength and durability. The rims themselves have a very on-trend internal width of 30mm, perfect for wide enduro spec rubber, while the 23mm depth should offer a good blend of compliance and strength. The rims are laced to Hunt's own very large body hubs via triple butted pilar spokes and feature oversized 70mm axles for maximum durability when you decide to up your hook to flat gain. The rear hub also features their rapid engagement system, which offers 5 degrees of engagement and a lovely and loud free hub buzz, which is sure to divide opinion out on the trail and in the comments. Ours have the SRAM XD3 hub body installed, but you can choose Shimano's micro spline or old school HG interface if required. The Carbon Race Enduro wheels come pre-taped and with valves included for a hopefully pain-free tubeless setup and weigh a claimed 1,929 grams for this 29 inch set. However, you can get them in the very on-trend mullet setup or full 27.5 if jibbing is the name of your game. I'm going to be hammering these wheels on the trails over the next few months to find out if they are worthy of that tempting price tag. So stay tuned for a full review in the future. It's really nice to have the latest tech on your bike, but 
None of that matters if you don't fuel properly on your bike rides. And with that in mind, this month I've got something very different for you. I've got you a waffle maker. So without further ado, let me show you what I put in my waffle. So things you need, plain flour, dark brown sugar, white sugar, baking powder, salt, protein powder, milk, three spoonfuls of flour in the bowl, a spoonful of dark brown sugar, three spoonfuls of white sugar, a pinch of salt, a pinch of baking powder, give it all a big mix, then pour in your milk and mix that up until it gets nice and smooth. Then preheat your waffle maker, grease it up and spoon it in. Wait six to 10 minutes and then bang, we're now gonna reveal what is inside. Perfect waffle. Look at that. Crispy on the outside and uh, fluffy on the inside. Just how I like it. And that brings an end to the show this month. Don't forget, as ever, let us know what you want to see in next month's show and like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know every time we upload a new video.